All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. Okay, today let's take a look at uh, using sprites, um, image sprites, and um, some end particles. Okay, so basically what you see here are you know some images that I attach to sprites to kind of create a look of like fire or smoke or water. I mean, it could be anything. You know, it's just up to your imagination of how you can use this stuff. Now, let's take a look at what sprites are real quick. Um, sprites are like a particle, and they're sort of particles that you can do lots of different things with. Um, this is an image sequence mapped to what's known as sprites, okay? So here you see them, and the interesting thing about sprites is, is that, you know, no matter where you move your camera, say for example I move my camera around like this, you can see where those sprites always face the camera, okay? So you can keep that in mind as, as we do this. Um, so, yeah, basically I just have these set up as kind of like a, a fiery smoke or something like that. Um, in general, they look good in the distance. Um, you know, you might want to use this for, um, you know, a really low cost render effective kind of effect and also compositing into, you know, something else. Okay, so keep that in mind is that generally when you're creating sprites, you might be using this as an image sequence output that you're going to composite into something else in After Effects later. Okay, so that's cool. Now watch this. Let's say, for example, I have this going here. I'm going to push pause here for a second. Here's our sprites. I'm going to grab the particles. I'm going to come up here, and depending on how you have this set, um, you can have it ignore the solver gravity. Right now it's ignoring it, so the gravity of the solver is not on, so the particles are going up. But if I turn my ignore solver gravity off, let's go back to the beginning of the animation, and let's come up here a little bit more. You can see that those particles are now going to fall, and let's see here, I'm going to turn the effect off there. And now I have them colliding with something. So these could easily be used for a waterfall in the background or things like that. Um, and you can get a, a really good water effect. And I, it's kind of all dependent on what the image looks like that you're using that's mapped to these sprites. Um, for example, I could change this up pretty easily by just varying our shading down here. And I have this set to a normalized age and age down here, but like let's say I turn this one into a white. Um, we'll go back and take a play. And so now it looks you know more like water. And obviously you can play with your shading and your ramp and your colors right here to create any kind of look that you want. All right? So that's cool. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do this real quick. And um, in the meantime, let me, um, let me take Maya off here real quick for a second. If you go over to my uh, website, deepfriedectoplasm.com on the deep node, I put together a uh, dust devil uh, tutorial for you so that um, you can kind of <laughs> play around with some dust devils or even a tornado. Um, in this case, I just put a cheesy texture on the ground here because really it's more about getting this particle effect um, you know, using end particles and whatnot, and actually getting that vortexy uh, tornado. Okay, so if you go over there, you'll you'll be able to see that tutorial on the Deep Node, and um, yeah, the Deep Node is a um, a donation basis. So you know, it, it, I think you know you can donate something as little as a dollar, and then have access to everything that I do over here on my website, um, uh, deepfriedectoplasm.com. Okay. So just to be aware of that. Now, let's go into Photoshop real quick. I want to show you kind of how I made the image sequence um, for the sprites, okay? And making an image sequence um, is fairly easy. I basically just created a black background. I have one layer on top here that I'm going to use this brush. Um, it is a Photoshop brush, and it is of a cloud, okay? So I just chose one of my brushes here, and it's a, a cloud. I'm going to set this at about yeah 447 pixels. I'm going to use the white, and I'm going to just click once, and boom, I have a cloud. Now, uh, when you do image uh, sequences for the sprites, it has to be a square image, and I have this one is a 512 by 512, 
and um, you have to have an alpha channel okay so an alpha channel is just basically saying to Maya hey don't you know ignore anything that's black we'll just use that and see it as transparent okay so an easy way to get an alpha channel from something like this without working very hard at all is to come up into your actions so if you go to your window come down into your actions and open up your actions and there they are make sure you get this window and if you don't see this menu we're looking for video actions so you may have to click on this up here um, this little button and come down and make sure that you have video actions uh, set so that this menu shows up okay and that's this menu right here okay video actions and what we want to do is we just want to click on this alpha channel from visible layers okay so right now the visible layers are both of these I don't want to have the black as a visible layer in there so I'm gonna turn that off and then I just want to click on this alpha channel from visible layers I want to click the play button right here and it's gonna give me a warning saying that it's gonna create a standard alpha channel based on the visibility of this layer okay so I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue now if I look over here in my channels you can see where it created that alpha one channel which is great that's exactly what we want okay so you're gonna do a, a, a series of se a sequence of images so in this case I'll just name this like cloud one okay and I'm gonna go ahead and save it as and I just would do like cloud one alright and I'm gonna go cloud dot one and then save it as a TIFF with no layers okay so that's all you need to do I'll save it to my desktop cloud one everything's looking good and now you'll just choose a different brush what I usually do is just leave this um, file open and just delete my my layer there and make sure you come over and delete your alpha channel as well um, because you don't want to keep piling up alpha channels over here for new things that you're you're doing so anyway you go back into your layers panel just create a new layer and then you're good to go I would choose another brush in this case I might want to switch it up to something else like you know a different a different cloud uh, or grunge or something and it all varies you know depending on what you want to do um, I'll just go ahead and create something like that that's what it looks like this might work as well these grungy patterns work well for different types of things too so you don't always have to stay with clouds okay so then I would just repeat the process that I did here I would turn off that layer check here go ahead and hit play go ahead and create the alpha channel and there it is over there look at my layers and I'm good to go and then I just file save this one as cloud.2 okay so um, the sprite image sequence is kind of finicky like that so you have to label these correctly all right so anyway I'm gonna go to Photoshop we'll go ahead and just hide Photoshop let's get back into Maya real quick and take a look at how we can um, how we can uh, change this up now I'm gonna come into my my uh, outliner here and I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff that we have going on here I'm just gonna hit delete and there we go and just for kicks and grins I'll just go to edit or uh, yeah I'll just go to edit and delete all by type history and now we have kind of a fresh scene now let's set up this particle real quick I'm gonna come in here make sure you're in your end dynamics menu set come into your end particles and I've chosen cloud to start with I mean usually I start with a cloud but that's just we can change this up later so anyway um, if you go to end particles create end particles we're gonna create an emitter and I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I think what I'll do is just reset my settings here and the type of um, emitter that we want to create is a volume okay so we're gonna create a volume emitter we're gonna roll down here make sure that the shape is set to cube and we're gonna take this away from center we're just gonna put this at zero okay because we're gonna write some expressions to change some of this stuff so I'm gonna put that at zero and along the axis I'll put like maybe 3.5 and that'll just give me an a, along the axis kind of a mission which is gonna be straight up or straight down depending on what my solver is set at so that's cool now all I'll do hit create okay so I set my um, set this timeline to about a thousand that'll give us some time to play out our particles I'm gonna hit play and you can see where they're just sort of sitting inside of there and they're not doing anything really well actually when I go back to the beginning there they go okay 
So that should be kind of what, what look you're getting. Uh, make sure that you have your textures set to on up here and whatnot. And take a look at how they're bunching up at the top right here. Okay, I'm going to check out our particles right now. And we're going to look at, at kind of how these are set up by default. I'm going to come up into the top. And you can see where the lifespan mode is living forever. So these particles are never dying which in our case we're going to switch these up so that they only they only last for a certain amount of time and then die off so let's do that let's change up our our live to ever to a random range and set our lifespan to something like maybe 14 and lifespan random to maybe five i don't know that's a good starting point so now i'm going to go ahead and, and go back and hit play watch the particles play out and we should see them starting to die off at some point up here. And um, once they play to a certain point, now you can see they're starting to die off. And that looks pretty good. Now, they're also bunching up at the top here because we have a little bit of drag on these. So I'm going to go ahead and, and stop the animation. I'm going to take this drag down to zero. And we're going to watch what happens with those particles now as they go up. Okay, so they're going up, and now you can see they're extending a little further, and they're not bunching up. I'm going to back off a little bit here. And at some point, now they're starting to die off up there, and they're sort of evenly, you know, being emitted from this emitter. Okay, so we'll stick with that for a minute here. Let's bring those up a little bit, and there they go. Okay, now once again, um, if you turn your ignore solver gravity off and go back to the beginning, your particles are going to start off and then they're going to go downward because that gravity from the solver is affecting those. Okay, so no big deal there, just be aware. I'm going to go with the solver gravity off. We'll go back to the beginning, let them play out a little bit here. All right, and now let's take these particles make sure you select your particles i'm going to come down and we're going to switch these up to sprites really quick so if you go into your shading section you might as well just switch it from cloud over to sprites and this is what you should get if your textures are turned off um, and shading turned off that's what you're going to get now the other thing that's important right here is underneath your shading you want to make sure that you have smooth shade all selected and hardware texturing okay so when I choose hardware texturing then that way we're going to be able to see the sprites and their and the sprites only work with the hardware texturing as well over here in your um, rendering you switch this up to the Maya hardware render okay so come over into the hardware Maya hardware and leave it like that okay so I'm gonna keep that on there for a second and let's come down and do a little bit more work on our, our sprites. We're pretty much ready to attach an image sequence to these sprites, okay? So there's a little bit of a process involved with this to get it right, and I'm gonna show you that right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come into the hyper shade, okay? And I'm going to just sort of delete some of this stuff that I had in there before, and we're gonna create a surface, just a regular Lambert, okay? And to that Lambert, on the color channel right here we're going to click the checkerboard and we're going to choose a 2d texture file and we're going to navigate to i'm going to navigate to this smoky sequence and this is what you can download this sequence from my uh from the archive section over on my website www.deepfriedectoplasm.com and i'm going to choose number one now notice how these are labeled smoky.1.tiff and I have seven images okay so we want to keep this number in mind because that's important okay so I'm going to choose this first image and I'm going to hit open okay and it's going to attach itself now here's what we want to do as we attach these sprites first we want to check that we're using interactive sequence caching and my start of the sequence is one and the sequence end is seven because I have seven images okay now I want to click on use image sequence because I want to use that image sequence and right now my timeline is set at frame 152 and I don't want it there right now so I'm going to go back to the beginning and the image number what we're going to do first is break the connection of the expression that's already on this image number so I'm going to go to image number and I'm going to delete the expression and you can see the purple goes away 
Well, what we want to do now, because we have image number one and we have frame number one set, I'm going to go ahead and right mouse click and set a key. And then what I want to do is come down here and I want to step forward by one frame. I'm going to step forward by a frame and I'm going to actually turn my interactive um, off and I'm going to set this to image number two. Okay, so we're on frame number two, image number two, and I want to go ahead and set that key. I'm going to come down, go forward one more frame, and do the same thing. Set, uh, click, uh, type in three, and set a key. Go forward one more frame, type four, and right mouse click, set key. Go forward one to frame number five and five, and set key. Go forward one more, do number six and set a key and go forward one more and number seven and we're gonna right mouse click and set a key okay so now I have my keyframe set for um, a you know chronological one through seven is gonna play in this image sequence okay but if I go back to the beginning and play uh, right now we haven't assigned this this um, we have not assigned this Lambert to our particles so we want to do that so I'll go ahead and just select our particles right here. You can either right mouse click on your um, on your Lambert 3 and assign the material to the selection or well I, I just did that so that's a good way to do it. Okay so now you can see where you have the frame number one is attached to these particles. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and frame number one is the only one that's playing at the moment okay and that's going to be usual because sprites are a little finicky we have to get these hooked up correctly through by using an expression okay so that's next let's roll down here into our per particle array attributes and what we want to do first is just add a general attribute and you have uh, three different panels over here. i'm going to go into the new right here and i'm going to type in um, my rotation or ROT and I'm going to click on override nice name and this is going to allow me in a minute or two to um, establish an expression for the rotation of these particles okay so right now all we want to do is just do this make sure you just leave these at, at uh, the default values here and hit OK and we don't see anything happen because we haven't actually written a uh, uh, an expression for that Okay, but now what we want to do is we want to add some more general attributes to this per particle uh, sprite system. Okay, so down here in the in the um, tabs you'll find a sprite number per particle. We're going to go and command select the scale x per particle, the scale y per particle, and the twist per particle. Okay, and we're going to just hit OK. Now you'll see them show up over here in your um, per particle array attributes. And the first one we were really interested in is this sprite number per particle. So we're going to click in there and we're going to right mouse click and go creation expression. And that's going to bring up our expression editor. And what we want to do here is just sort of highlight this. You can middle mouse button drag and drop it down in there or you can just copy and paste, doesn't really matter. And on this sprite number per particle, we're going to type in equals a random selection of 1 through 7. Those are our images, okay? A random of 1 to 7 and a semicolon. And we're going to go ahead and hit create, okay? Now, watch what happens when I go back to the beginning of the, um, the animation. Okay, now we can see all of the various um, images that we have attached, our seven different cloud images. Okay, so they're all there, and they're all sort of randomly being emitted as the sprites are being, you know, coming out of our, our emitter there. Okay, so that's cool. Now, let's move on to the second part of the expression. We're going to want to look at our twist, okay? And the sprite twist is going to sort of allow these to be orientated in, in different directions, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and, and click on my sprite twist right here. And I'm going to maybe grab this right here, and we'll bring and drop, drag and drop it down here. I'm going to put a return in there just so we can see what we're doing. And the t okay, so here's our sprite twist. We're going to put that one to equal 
um, a negative 180 okay I'll go parentheses negative 180 and then comma to a positive 180 and then another parenthesis and a semicolon and I'm gonna go ahead and hit edit okay and it's saying that I have a syntax error in here so I might want to look and see what what's happening with that so in this case I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that and go back here and I'm gonna come in here and look at my sprite twist and I'm gonna come back here and do a creation expression and let's see twist per particle we'll do the same thing I'm gonna bring that down here and I'm gonna do a do a return oh I know why because we didn't put random in there okay so we're gonna go a sprite twist is equal to a random and we're gonna do a negative 180 okay comma to a positive 180 and then a parenthesis and a semicolon and I'm gonna go ahead and hit edit okay and you can see we're down here some of these already twisted up a little bit and we'll go back to the beginning and we'll play this okay so now you can see where that twist it's sort of giving it a random twist between 180 degrees one way or the other okay so that just gives us a lot more nice variables to kind of play around with there all right now what I'm going to also do is I'm going to just hit a return there and we're going to set an expression for our end particle shape one for that rotation okay so I'm going to copy and paste this little part down here and it says end particle shape one period okay and we're going to um, type in my rot my rotation and we're going to do the same thing for that we're going to go to it equals a oh, it equals a random number we'll go rand and we'll do the parentheses and we're just going to go from like negative one comma to one and I'll put another parenthesis and semicolon and I'll hit edit okay so now that added I'm going to go back to the beginning here and play that added another um, element to our overall our overall twist here so that's that's a rotational thing okay so essentially if we look at it from the top here go back to the beginning now we have all of these kind of rotating a little bit and that's cool so so that's it okay now if we want to mess around with the scale I'm gonna leave this expression editor alone now and let's come in here and take a look at scaling these um, your particles may not be large enough and so what we want to do is scale these up a little bit or scale them down a little bit it doesn't really matter but an easy way to do that is to scale them um, on, on a per particle basis so with this sprite scale Y I'm gonna go ahead and right mouse click in here and what we want to do is create ramp and choose our options and we're gonna just uh, select this new ramp we're gonna hit OK and what I want to do now with this ramp is I want to take this scale this ramp I'm gonna right mouse click in there come over to the array mapper and I'm gonna edit the ramp and in this case I'm gonna take out the gray and I'm gonna switch this color right here up to say a value of like say 8 okay and now we'll go back to the beginning and we'll hit play and you can see where it did scale them up in the y-axis and it scaled them up to a degree of eight so we want to do the same thing to the other um, I'm gonna click on my particles we want to do the same thing to the X right here but what I want to do there is I'm gonna right mouse click in here go to create ramp choose my options and underneath this ramp right here we're gonna see where this is the ramp that we just created so we're gonna we're gonna just duplicate it and put that one on there and I'm gonna hit OK I'm gonna go back to the beginning and now you can see where they're both scaled correctly and we do have a little bit larger scale now it's very easy to, to set the scale on this by just re-clicking here and we can edit that ramp and we can come in here and, and go to our ramp value and take that down to say maybe like four okay and let's go back to the beginning here and those particles should be a little bit smaller okay so that's how you control your particle size very easy stuff okay now let's get on with something a little more interesting let's take a look at the shading properties of these particles real quick 
I'm going to come up here and we're going to take a look at what the, the normal, um, yeah, your, your normal things you're using here are opacity for one. And you can see where this is the overall opacity of all of those sprites. Okay, so I'm going to leave my opacity down here to something like that maybe. Okay, and I'm going to come down here into my color now. Um, we do have an opacity scale, so I'm going to switch this up to smooth real quick, and I'm going to add an, a few more points in here by just clicking inside here. Okay, so now I have a couple of various points to work with so that you can see what this scale is doing. Okay, so if I take the scale down in the middle there by clicking on this new point that I just added, you can see where, let me, I'm going to click off, we'll click on those particles, we'll get up here a little bit more, and you can see where this scale is affecting those right when they're being emitted. Okay, and then these are up at the, the very bottom. All right, and here's the, the top side, or, you know, something that might be up here a little more. Well, I'm going to switch this up real quick. Um, I'm going to actually take this this opacity scale and switch it to normalized age and you can see it gives it a little bit different kind of control so you know you have a little bit more control when you use this normalized age mode so anyway I'm, I'm gonna go with that and I can just see what what's happening by bringing this in and I also want to set the scale randomize up a little bit this gives me a little bit of random random ability or random varied opacity in different areas okay so we'll leave that like that for a moment um, I'm gonna come into the color and take a look you can see where the white is white down here and blue is there if I switch my white up to something more like say that orange color now you can see that orange setting up in there and I'm going to also set this this scale over here to smooth and I'm gonna color randomize a little bit I'm gonna set this up to a normalized age and you can see where now you have some, this also works in conjunction with um, our opacity scale range up here, okay? So it's now a matter of fine tuning exactly what you want in here. Um, in this case, I think I'll add another point in my color right here, and I'll turn this blue into something more like a mid gray, and I might take this blue and just set it up to a black, okay? And let's see if that, let's get rid of this blue in here. And we'll set that up to like a mid gray. And you can add as many points as you want in here of different colors. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, we'll switch that one up to a darker gray. And um, yeah, there you go. Okay, so we'll mess around with this, randomize the color. I might want to bring my scale up here at the top a little bit. Might want to bring that up, might want to bring that up, and there you go. So now, if I do a play, you know, we're getting kind of like a, a, a fire, and then it might go up into the smoke in the background, and, you know, there you go. So, so that's cool. Okay, so that's about it. Um, you know, you can, you can play around with this particle stuff all day long. Um, as far as setting, you know, anything you want to use up here. Sometimes I like to use the depth sort um, function because it, it gives a little bit more, a little smoother sort of sorting or a look to the smoke. Now, if you want to take these same particles and actually make them collide with something, all you have to do is just create an object. Like if I create a, a sphere, we'll just do a sphere right there. And we'll drop it down below. Or we could actually... Yeah, we could actually put this right up in here. Uh, let's see. I'll center it out over the emitter by going 0, 0, 0. And we'll bring this up. And I'm going to leave my sphere. And I'm going to select my particles. And I'll come up in here into the end particles, uh, end mesh, and create a passive collider. Okay, so now I can go back to the beginning. And technically, those should collide. And do their thing on the side there okay so so there you go um, let's move that under there you can see where they're colliding and doing their thing 
All right, so that's one way to make things collide with these sprites. Now, another thing you can also do um, is add a little bit of um, turbulence. So for example, I can go ahead and select my particles right here and come up into fields and maybe add a little bit of turbulence, okay? And I think I'll bring this turbulent field up to maybe right about in there and we'll just see what happens at default. Okay, so the turbulence is making things kind of swerve a little bit this way. So, you know, now you have all these properties to play with over here in your turbulence field. Okay, so I'm going to grab that turbulence field. And remember that you do have various, um, you know, properties once you create a, a rigid shape for things to bounce off and whatnot. So, you know, that's kind of another tutorial for another day, but you know, in this tr uh, turbulence field, you you have your magnitude right here, and that really is about the key control. You can switch your phase up um, on your XYZ, but literally, you know, your magnitude is probably going to be, you know, what what does the most for you. So anyway, okay. So uh, I think that's about it for this tutorial. I hope you got a good idea of how um, sprites are working, and. Um, there you go. So um, <laughs> hope you learned something. And as always, be a good person and read a book. Go over to my website, deepfriedectoplasm.com, to pick up this, uh, the sprite images. They're in the archive section of my website. And that way you don't have to create your own uh, image sequence to do this tutorial. Okay? So there you have it. Great. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you for the next one.